Now, Central Europe is actually one of my favorite places in the entire continent of Europe. So what I'm going to do in today's video is I'm going to rank all of the Central European capital cities that I have visited from worst to best. Now, in terms of what constitutes or what counts as Central Europe, I've drawn a map here and this map is the map that we're going to call Central Europe in this video. So this region of Europe contains nine countries and actually, in fact, I haven't been to all nine countries. I've only been to seven out of the nine and that's because I haven't been to Switzerland and I haven't been to Liechtenstein. So therefore, that means I cannot rank Bern and I cannot rank Vaduz in this list. But I have been to the seven others, so I can rank those and that's what we're going to do today. Now, just very quickly before we do get into the list, if you do click onto the description and click onto the top link, it will take you to Skyscanner and Skyscanner are the world's leading flight comparison website. I'll also drop a link in the comment section too, it'll be the top link. Now, Skyscanner is very easy to use. You select the destination that you want to go to, you select the dates that you want to fly out on. And then what Skyscanner will do is it will compare all of the different airlines, all of the different flight times, and it will also give you all of the possible deals for the flights that you select. I always use Skyscanner, definitely recommend it, really easy to use. So go to the description, go to the comment section and use the Skyscanner link. Right, so now we're going to get into the rankings, starting from number seven, the worst in the list. And in seventh place, it's going to be Ljubljana, the capital of Slovenia. Now, I really do think that I should return back to Ljubljana one day because I did go a couple years ago in March and it was really cold, really wet, really windy. So that has probably given me a negative impression of the place. But it certainly is a very pretty city to visit. You've got a very nice historic old town but it is a little bit small for my liking. You can get all of the highlights done within 24 hours. And also I did find the prices there to be a little expensive. It certainly is not a very cheap destination. I mean, there are certainly cheaper cities in this list of cities that I'm gonna tell you today. So for me, Ljubljana is a nice city. I do recommend that you go up to the castle because you get some nice views across the city. But other than that, I do feel there are better value places in Europe where you'll have more exciting things to do at cheaper prices. So that's why Ljubljana is going to be seventh in this list today, but I probably will give it another chance one day. And so now number six in this list of Central European capital cities is Bratislava, the capital of Slovakia. Now, again, in Bratislava, you do have a really nice, small, historic old town. Now, again, like Ljubljana, you can get everything really done within a day because it is a very small place. But for me, I do slightly prefer Bratislava because Bratislava definitely felt a bit more lively to me in the old town. There was definitely more of a buzz and an atmosphere, perhaps because of all the day trippers from Vienna. Now, I actually did a day trip from Budapest, but I have heard the nightlife there is good. So maybe I'll go back and check that out. But I did really enjoy the beer there and I did really enjoy the food. I definitely recommend that you get the halushki. They're like these Slovak potato dumplings with sheep cheese. And also the pierogi there is really good as well. I highly recommend that you go to the Bratislava flagship restaurant and you get a Slovak platter, which is what you can see in the picture here. Like Ljubljana, again, you've got a castle as well that I recommend that you go to. But again, other than that, don't think there is too much to do. So I'm going to rank it in sixth place. I do like it though. I think I would return again to try the food and to try the nightlife there. But I do think I slightly prefer it over Ljubljana. So I will give Bratislava sixth place. So now we're up to fifth place. And in fifth place, this is going to be Vienna, the capital of Austria. Now, I do have to rank Vienna over Bratislava because Vienna is just bigger. There are more things to do and the architecture there is extremely grand. You've got all the Habsburg palaces. There's two big ones that you've got to go to. You've got to go to the Hofburg Palace and you've also got to go to the Schönbrunn Palace too. You've got all that Habsburg influence. You've got other palaces too. You've got all the designer shops you can possibly imagine. At one stage, Vienna was the capital of the Holy Roman Empire, and you can really feel that through all the palaces, all the grand architecture. And of course, there is a massive cafe culture there. I definitely recommend that you go to Cafe Central. Really, really grand again, incredible architecture and design inside the cafe. There are loads of green spaces. I would really like to go back. I'd like to go to the zoo there because Vienna has the world's oldest zoo. And I'd also love to go to the Christmas markets there too. So maybe I'll be back around Christmas time, but 
it is very, very expensive. You're gonna find it very challenging finding affordable food, affordable accommodation, etc., etc. And dare I say, it just isn't very exciting. It's very clean cut, very regal. And as you can probably imagine, Austrians aren't the friendliest people in the world. So I am gonna give Vienna fifth place, but I was thinking about giving Vienna fourth place because in fourth place, I'm actually gonna put Berlin in fourth place. Now, Berlin is a much more uglier city than Vienna. The city was absolutely obliterated during the Second World War. So a lot of the buildings there are very, very ugly. And also like Vienna, people there are not very friendly. So given this, why am I gonna rank Berlin above Vienna? I just think Berlin is a more exciting city overall. It's a bigger city, it's a more vibrant city. It has a better nightlife scene than Vienna. Of course, Berlin is renowned for its infamous nightlife scene. See, for me, Berlin isn't one of my favorite all-time cities, but it is certainly an absolutely fascinating city with its history, especially with its recent history. World War II, the aftermath of World War II, communism, West versus East Germany. You can, of course, go to the Berlin Wall, go into the East Side Gallery, You've got World War II memorials, you've got the Memorial of the Holocaust. You've also got lots of history from the Prussian times. You've even got an island called Museum Island, which is full of museums. You've got art galleries. There's just a lot you can get up to in Berlin. And of course, you can go to the Reichstag too. The thing is, I would rather go back to Vienna because I feel like there is stuff that I haven't done in Vienna that I'd like to do. Whereas in Berlin, I don't have a huge urge to return because I feel like I've done everything that I wanted to do. But I do think overall Berlin, for me at least, is a better city to visit than Vienna. So I'm going to rank Berlin in fourth place in this list. It just loses out on some marks just because the people there are not the best, as I mentioned before. And also it's quite pricey. It's not cheap, cheap. And also it can be an ugly city in some places. But you certainly want to make sure that you do try a Derner kebab. Make sure you get one in Berlin. So now that brings us on to number three in this list of Central European capital cities. And third in the list is going to be Prague. I feel like Prague is a better city for me personally than Berlin. Admittedly, compared with Berlin, there isn't as many things to do compared with Berlin. It is a smaller city and also Prague Old Town is one of the most overcrowded places in all of Europe. But there is no doubt for me that Prague Old Town is one of the most beautiful old towns in the whole world. You have incredible architecture, colourful buildings, cobble streets, historic buildings. And even though it can get a bit too much with the overcrowded tourism, there is a really vibrant atmosphere in the city that I really do enjoy. It really is incredible, especially at evening, just walking around the old town in the summer, just soaking in the atmosphere. And also I really do like Czech food. I like the food out in Prague. You've got lots of meat, lots of sauces. I do like the beef with dill sauce. You get lots of dumplings as well with your food out there. I also recommend the beef goulash. The beef goulash is really, really good. And also a bit more expensive, but I really do love the duck and dumplings, the red cabbage, gravy can't really beat it and of course you got to get yourself a pilsner as well a pilsner urkel in prague i really do recommend that you go to this pub here that i mentioned here i can't pronounce it i'm not even going to try to pronounce it but it's a traditional czech pub highly recommend you go there or you can do a day trip to pilsen and go to the pilsner urkel brewery which is what i did I really liked that day, it was a good day out. You go on a tour of the brewery and then at the end you get a complimentary unfiltered Pilsner Urkel glass. But again, I can't emphasize enough how stunning Prague Old Town is. Just walking around the Old Town, going to Prague Castle, walking along Charles Bridge, seeing all of the incredible churches, there's really good nightlife there too. And again, as I said before, it's a really vibrant city and a vibrant place to be, especially in the summer. But it does lose marks because it is quite expensive. Accommodation there is pretty expensive. You can find some cheap food if you know the right places to go. I highly recommend you go to the Honest Guide YouTube channel and watch his YouTube videos because he is excellent. He gives fantastic information about Prague. But again, it is a fantastic city to check out, so I do highly recommend it. Now, in second place in this list, a bit of a surprising one, it's going to be Warsaw. Now, there is no doubt that there are just more things to do in Prague compared with Warsaw. There are more things to do in Berlin compared with Warsaw, and there are more things to do in Vienna compared with Warsaw. So why do I rank Warsaw second? And it's because of that fact. It's because of the fact that Warsaw is not a city catered to tourists. It doesn't have the over-tourism that other other cities in this list may have but it does have still a vibrant atmosphere a lively old town 
lots of food options, lots of restaurants, lots of bars, lots of nightlife. You've got a really interesting history there, especially the history from World War II. I recommend that you go to the Warsaw Uprising Museum. You get to learn all about the Polish uprising in Warsaw against the German occupation in 1944. You can also go to the History of Polish Jews Museum too. You've got lots of palaces, lots of green spaces in Warsaw, lots of parks, and also lots of fantastic architecture, most of which was actually destroyed in the Second World War but was rebuilt by the Polish so the old town is exactly as it was before it was destroyed so I do really like the old town and I also do really like Polish food as well you definitely want to try some Polish pierogi and also I highly recommend that you try the Zurek soup I really do like that Zurek soup so no you don't have the stellar tourist attractions that you may find in Berlin or Vienna Prague but what you do get is you get very good food you get very friendly people. I find Polish people to be very friendly. You get good bars, good nightlife, good restaurants, interesting Polish history, interesting museums, galleries. For me personally, I would rather spend time in Warsaw over Prague. So that's why I have to rank Warsaw in second place in my list. But I know a lot of people don't like Warsaw, so you may not like it, but I do like the city. But what I will say is that prices in Warsaw are starting to creep up. They're not cheap. Poland isn't the really cheap destination that it may have been like 10, 15 years ago. Prices are getting more expensive. Food restaurants are certainly more expensive than other places such as in the Balkans, but it's still affordable compared with even Prague, Vienna, Berlin. So actually you do save money compared with those places. Now that does lead us on to first place in this list of cities. I mean, you can probably already guess it now given that we've run out of countries, but just before I do go into that first place city, if you do also go to the description, click onto the level eight link and that's where you can buy your luggage. Level eight sell very high quality bags, luggage, rucksacks, backpacks, etc., etc., for your trip. So if you haven't got your luggage sorted out for your upcoming trip, Go to level eight, go to that link in the description and the comment section and get your luggage with level eight today. And so in first place in this list of central European capital cities, as you would have guessed, it's going to be Budapest, the capital city of Hungary. Now at similar prices to Warsaw, Budapest has everything. You've got a tourist infrastructure, you've got lots of things to do, you've got lots of restaurants, lots of food options, lots of bars, lots of nightlife, great architecture, history, museums. In Budapest, you have two sides of the city. You have the Buda side of the city, which is to the west of the River Danube. That's where you've got Buda Castle, which I recommend you go to. And also that's where you've got Fisherman's Bastion. I can't believe that I don't have any pictures of Fisherman's Bastion because it really is incredible. If you go onto Google, you'll see how incredible it is. So I definitely recommend that you go there. Now, you'll probably be staying on the Pest side of Budapest, or as the Hungarians say, the Pest side of Budapest. That's where most of the action is happening. That's where most of the hotels, accommodation, restaurants, bars, nightlife, shops, cafes, etc, etc are located at. And that's where I recommend that you stay. You've also got the very famous Szczecny Thermal Bath there. Now, I did go, personally speaking, I did think it was a bit overrated. I thought it was too overcrowded. It felt a bit dirty, to be honest. So I wasn't a fan, personally. I would recommend that you go to some of the other thermal baths that are less well known. You can check out Hero Square. You can also go to the House of Terror Museum, which is one of the best museums in the entire region of Europe. You can also have a walk around the Jewish district too. And the thing about Budapest is that it does have some good food because Hungarian food is very tasty. I recommend that you try the savory Hungarian pancakes. I went to this place here called Ghetto Gulyash, which was very good. I don't know if the prices have changed because it was quite affordable when I went a couple years back. I can imagine now that it may be a little bit more pricey due to inflation, but you definitely want to get the Hungarian cottage cheese dumplings for dessert. They are absolutely fantastic. You can get yourself some traditional Hungarian goulash too. You've also got to try the chicken paprikas when you're there as well. And also you must try Hungarian langosh, which is kind of like a fried bread dough kind of thing. You get it with sour cream, you get langosh all around Budapest. So I highly recommend you try some of that. I do recommend that you do a little bit of research in terms of which restaurants to go to when you're on Budapest, because you will find quite a lot of tourist trap restaurants, restaurants that will give you cold, not very tasty goulash for overcharged prices. You will need to do a little bit of research in terms of where to eat. 
But another thing that I do like about Budapest is that it does have a really good nightlife scene. Lots of pubs, lots of bars, clubs, and especially the Ruin pub. So I recommend that you go to one of the Ruin pubs. Now, the most famous Ruin bar in Budapest is called the Zimpler Kurt pub. Now, it is very touristy. It's pretty overpriced, pretty expensive, but it is a really cool experience. I would recommend that you go have a drink there just for the experience. So just do a bit of research in terms of where to go. You've also got pub crawls you can do there as well if you don't want to search for your own nightlife. If you just go onto social media or online, just type in pub crawls in Budapest, you'll see some come up. And also what you can do as well is you can go onto a Danube boat tour where you get unlimited drinks too. And what I'm actually going to do, I'm going to put that link in the description to this video and the comment section as well, where when you click onto that link, you can book yourself a Danube boat tour in Budapest. So that's a nice experience that you may be interested in having too. You can also get party boat cruises as well, where it becomes basically like a big party. So for me, Budapest is one of my favorite cities in Europe. You have so much to do, lots of great food, lots of nightlife, lots a great architecture but i would highly recommend that you come in the summer instead of other times because in other times of year when it's a bit more colder a bit more wet it is a bit more depressing amongst the very grand austria-hungarian style architecture you do have a lot of gray sometimes depressing buildings so in the winter time it can feel a little bit more depressing so i would recommend summer for budapest so now what i want you to do is i want you to auto to the comment section and let me know if you agree or disagree with me a lot of people in my recent videos have disagreed with a lot of my statements so do get in the comment section do let me know your opinion let's have a debate in the comment section do you agree with my list would you change any of the cities into different orders what would be your list so let me know your thoughts in the comment section now i do hope that you have enjoyed this video and i do hope that you have found this video useful especially if you are planning a trip to europe sometime soon if you have enjoyed it please do hit the thumbs up button click the like button it really does help the channel out and also do subscribe to my channel for some more travel content so thank you very much for watching and i'll see you all in my next video